Hi everybody and welcome. You ever want to know what essential oils are good for children and how to use them safely? Well, today we're going to talk about five essential oils that are suggested to be used for children. And when I say children, I mean ages 0 to 11 years of age. And if you're new here, I'm Danny of Natural Ally D. I am a aromatherapist and a social worker. I enjoy sharing things related to enhancing your overall quality of life and well-being. So, I was watching a video by a beautiful couple and the video channel is called Maze Lee and I'll leave a link in the description. The couple has seven beautiful children, the mother is expecting their eighth and in the beginning of this video this mother is using eucalyptus globulus in a bath with her two children under the age of 10. Well me being an aromatherapist I said let me check you know this essential oil that she's using without a carrier and you know with me safety is key and eucalyptus globulus is not one of the essential oils that is recommended for children under the age of 10 years of age right or expecting mothers so today I want to share with you five essential oils that could be used for children ages 0 to 11 First is lavender, second is rose, third is neroli, fourth is frankincense, and fifth is Roman chamomile. And I'm going to share with you more details about one of these essential oils. Um, stay tuned to the end of this and you'll see a, a detailed presentation about a particular essential, essential oil um, can be used for children. And when you're using essential oils in a bath, you wanna make sure that you use a carrier. And if you know with me, safety is always key. So um, in a bath, you would use um, four ounces of dead sea salt. You would fill the jar halfway up and you would also add 24 drops of essential oil to this shake, right? 50 times. Open it back up, add more dead sea salt, and shake again. And from here, you could use one ounce of this four ounce jar, for example, in a bath. And you wanna make sure that you mix it very well. So because essential oils may have a tendency to rise to the top, and when they're not mixed well, so I would suggest that you pour the dead sea salts with the essential oils um, under the running water and swish very well. So now I'm going to give you a, a detailed description of one of the essential oils I mentioned. And I thank you for watching. Bye-bye now. Welcome and enjoy the Roman Chamomile Essential Oil Presentation. Disclaimer. The information provided is intended for general knowledge only and it's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any type of disease, nor to be a substitute for a physician's medical advice or treatment for specific medical conditions. Always seek the advice of your doctor or other qualified health care professional regarding any medical situations. Do not disregard medical advice or delay in seeking it based on this information. All viewers of this content, especially those taking prescription or over-the-counter medications, should consult their health care provider. So we're going to start off with a little bit of history. Roman chamomile, or Latin name chamomamulum nobile, try saying that 10 times fast. <laughs> it's also known as English chamomile or true chamomile. Its history dates back as far as the ancient Egyptians who dedicated to their gods due to its curative properties, particularly when used for the acute fever known at the time as the ague. Chamomile was also used by the Romans in medicines, beverages, and incense. 
It was also known to be used as a sedative for crying babies. During the Middle Ages, this particular species of chamomile was commonly used as an herb to create a fragrant atmosphere at public gatherings and celebrations. When walked upon, the essential oil sacs and the flowers would release their wonderful fragrance in the air. Chamomile was employed for its bitter taste in beer during the Middle Ages, but was replaced by hops at a later time. Roman chamomile is also now produced in many other countries around the world and in the United Kingdom. It is considered by many experts to be the very finest quality. So characteristics of Roman chamomile are, it's like a daisy-like flower with white petals and a vibrant yellow center. It's known to be grown three to six inches in height. The essential oil is extracted from the flowers in steam distillation. And the oil is also known to be produced in the United States, Argentina, Belgium, England, France, Hungary, and Italy. Some therapeutic properties Roman chamomile are known for are analgesic, which relieves pain, antibacterial, inhibits destructive bacteria, antifungal, which prevents growth of fungus, anti-inflammatory, which reduces inflammation, antidepressant, alleviating depression, antiseptic, prevents the growth of disease causing microorganisms. Antispasmodic, relieves spasms of voluntary and involuntary muscles. Digestive, means it aids or balances digestion. Aminagogy, means it helps promote and regulate menstruation. A sedative, it's known to calm and tranquilize by lowering the functional activity of the organ or body part. It's known as a tonic. It means it strengthens and restores vitality. It's known as a febrifuge, which means it reduces fever. It's known to be stomachic, which means it promotes good stomach function. And vermifuge which means it destroys worms. The body systems Roman chamomile are known to work with are digestive, nervous, muscular, and endocrine. The feelings Roman chamomile are suggested to bring into your life or add to your life are friendly, centered, self-control, purposeful. Ways to use this essential oil. It suggests that you can use this essential oil in generally three ways. In a bath, through inhalation, also known as the smell, and topically on the skin. With children, you wanna be age appropriate in which manner you decide to use with them. Meaning, for example, if you're gonna use it in a bath, obviously an adult or caregiver would be mixing the essential oil for them. Like for example, in dead sea salts or a powdered milk, in which case you would take a four ounce jar of dead sea salts or powdered milk, fill it halfway, add up to 24 drops, but not more, of the essential oil and shake 50 times. Open the top back up, add more dead sea salts or powdered milk, whatever which one you used. Fill it up to the rim or the shoulder of the jar. Put the top back on and shake again 50 times. 
and you'll be using one ounce per bath daily. And it's recommended that you shake the jar every time you use it. And when you're pouring in the um, mixture in your bath, make sure to pour it up under the running water to um, get it mixed very well and shake it around in the tub. Because essential oils sometimes have a tendency to rise to the top. So if you're doing this for a youngin, um, make sure that you mix it very well. One of the other ways mentioned was smell through inhalation. You can use a diffuser, for example. And if you're gonna use a diffuser, you would add 10 to 12 drops for 15 minute intervals every two hours during the day. And you would have that diffuser furthest away from where a child is sleeping or furthest away from where a child is playing, for example. And that goes for us adults too. If you're gonna have a diffuser in the room, make sure that it's furthest away from where you are, okay? So diffusing is one, inhalation uh, through a sniff stick, for example. This would be more age appropriate for older children. And I will demonstrate that at the end, for example. And also it mentions that one to two drops can be placed on a piece of tissue and placed under the pillow. It also mentions that you could place one to two drops on the on your hand and rub and cup your, your mouth not to touch your face. Of course, this will be more age appropriate for older children um, because trying to tell younger ones not to touch their face is just <laughs> maybe a mute point. So definitely for older children that this may apply to. And lastly, it could be used topically. You could use it, for example, in a 10 milliliter roller bottle. You could add five drops to carrier oil. So you would fill the 10 milliliter roller bottle halfway up with the carrier oil. I would suggest jojoba or grapeseed. After you fill the 10 milliliter bottle halfway up, you add your five drops, put the top back on and shake 50 times. Then open it back up, add the rest of jojoba or grapeseed oil to fill almost to the top, but not quite. Put the top back on and shake again. And with this, you can apply to the bottom of the foot and or it says back of the neck. And I'll demonstrate that at the end. As always, we want to be safe with our essential oils. And if you watched any of my videos prior, you know safety is of utmost importance. And the safety notes I have for this essential oil is non-toxic and non-irritating. An additional safety warning suggests that if you apply to the skin, always perform a patch test. And you, all, you do that by properly diluting the essential oil with an appropriate carrier oil, such as jojoba or grapeseed. And you place it on a non-sensitive area of the skin, like the inside of an elbow. If there is essential oil irritation, you can use vegetable oil or milk to remove that irritation from that area. Keep oils out of reach of children. As we learn, it can be very dangerous. Do not put in your ears or eyes. And lastly, to preserve the shelf life and slow oxidation of the oils, store in a cool, dark place with the lids on tightly. This concludes our presentation on this essential oil. As always, it's been a pleasure to serve you and God bless you, I love you. Thank you for watching. Hi, so welcome back. So now we're going to create the applications 
that were mentioned in the presentation. So at the top of the video, before the presentation, I introduced to you bath salts, where you would use bath salts such as this in a container, and I demonstrated that for you. You can use a glass container, where again, you will be filling up halfway with dead sea salts, adding 24 drops of essential oil to this, and then shaking 50 times, take the top back off, you know, like so, feel all the way up to the shoulder, as we call it, of the jar, and add more dead sea salt, put the top back on, and shake 50 times more. You would use one ounce of this four ounce jar in a bath. And when you use it in, in a bath, you want to make sure that you put it up under the running water so it dissolves effectively and completely as much as possible because essential oils have a tendency to rise to the top so we want to mix it very well okay so if you're using this in a bath for yourself or for a child then certainly use um, this apparatus or way of using in a bath okay now for the 24 drops is for children. It's recommended that you don't use more than 16 drops for infants. So 16 drops for infants and 24 drops for children. Of course, an adult could um, use the 24 drops as well, okay? So that's the first application, using with dead sea salts and or you can use powdered milk, whatever your preference is. I prefer dead sea salts um, personally, okay? You can use a glass jar like this. Um, you can use a dark glass jar, which is probably more preferable. But you're going to keep these applications, um, the ones that can be kept in the refrigerator because with um, any applications with essential oils in it or essential oils themselves, you want to keep them in a cool, dark place. Okay? So this is one way. You can also use a um, colored jar, a dark colored jar such as this dark green or an amber color or a dark blue color. And you want to also keep this in the refrigerator a cool I recommend to keep it in the refrigerator maybe a refrigerator you have or space designated just for that so you know children don't get into it you know thinking that it's something else to be eaten but anywhere cool and dark maybe a basement if you have it or a storage area um, but definitely a cool dark place but you can use plastic but recommended it be PET or BPA free pla um, plastic because essential oils can have a tendency to eat away at the plastic. So I highly recommend glass, but if you use plastic, please get a dark colored, dark um, jar, okay? All right, so next. So first is a bath application. Next, it was mentioned that you can use essential oil through inhalation, right? So. One of the first ways you can use through inhalation or through smell is a diffuser. And for those of you who are not familiar with a diffuser, it can look like an apparatus like this, where it'll come with the top you can take off, use with water. There are some uh, diffusers that only you only add essential oil to. I recommend the ones with the water just for the misting effect and it's not as concentrated, okay? And these diffusers come in all sorts of different shapes. But typically something like this, where you take off the top or, or bottom, add water to it, okay? And like this one, it has a fill line. You would fill up to the fill line on the diffuser and you would add 10 to 12 drops. You would diffuse no more than 15 minute intervals every two hours. And when you have a diffuser in a room, place it furthest away from you. 
meaning if you're sitting here, put it in the furthest um, point of the room away from you, if at all possible. Um, it's definitely recommended so that you're not necessarily sitting on top of it if you're in the room or whatever you're doing, or, or children in the room or pets. Definitely place the diffuser furthest away from where you will be sitting or spending most of the time. Okay, so that's one way, diffusing. Next through inhalation of the smell is a spritzer. And if you're not familiar with a spritzer or a mister, this is a sample one, which is a dark, uh, dark blue bottle, like I was mentioning about the plastic for the um, bath salts. You want a dark colored bottle. This comes like in dark blue, um, amber color, the two colors of choice and in a one ounce spritzer bottle okay you would add let's see 14 drops of essential oil to a spritzer bottle you would fill halfway up with filtered or distilled water put the 14 drops in put the top back on it looks like this when you take it off Put the top back on, shake 50 times. Open it back up, fill back up to what we call the shoulder again, and put the top back on and shake at this point. And then shake every time you plan to use this because oil and water typically don't mix or stay mixed together, and they'll separate. So you wanna shake it every time. And you use it something similar to like an air freshener or what have you being mindful not to spread in your face or the face of a child or and you have you know in the area with anyone or a pet for that matter and you would simply spritz just spritz okay <laughs> making sure not to get near the face or the eyes or anything like that okay so that's the second way of in the air another way of having in or using essential oils through inhalation or through smell is through a sniff stick i'm not if you're not familiar with a sniff stick and it, it looks something similar to what you would purchase um in a drugstore like a vix uh, stick or what have you and here's a sample one usually comes in about say four pieces you have your wick um you have the part that the wick goes into and that has holes at the top, okay? And then you put this part, and this is the top to it. Put this top, and it has a bottom. So it doesn't fall out like so. And what you would do with this wick is add essential oil to the wick. So for example, I have a small sample of Roman chamomile, small sample bottle of Roman chamomile, and I would add 10 drops to this wick, okay? And once I've done so, I will put the end where the essential oil is into the sniff stick. Put the, the backing on it that it comes with it. <laughs> and put it on like so. And to use, you just simply inhale. That's it, inhale. So just for adults, you inhale now if you're using this for children um not necessarily for infants but let's say for instance an older child a middle school age child you just want to you know, give them that aroma therapy if you choose this method then i would definitely supervise them while they're doing this and um just to make sure that they understand that you just that's it so supervision with children. If we don't want them putting them in the nose or you know any younger children in the ear or what have you and definitely keep this out of the way of smaller children, okay? And so this is another way, a sniff stick or essential oil inhaler as it, you might hear it be called, okay? All right, so that's another way of inhalation or through smell, okay? Another way of smell would be to put 
um, the essential oil, one drop of it in your hand. I'm recommending this for adults. I know we're talking about children here, but definitely um, for adults, just one drop on your hand. Rub your hands together and smell. That's it. Smell. And obviously, if you were needing to touch your face, you would wash your hands first. Um, not recommended this application for uh, children, per se, because they're going to touch their face. <laughs> Inevitably, they are going to touch their face and trying to tell them, don't touch your face, you got essential oils, it's best not just not to use. But for this demonstration, I wanted to show you the different ways that you can use them and the uh, ways that you can share with children to use as appropriate, okay? All right, so that's another way of inhalation on your hands. Another way of inhalation or in the air may be to put it on a pillowcase, meaning that you put it on a piece of tissue. You add one drop to a piece of tissue and put it up under, you know, you have your pillowcase, you just put it right up under your pillowcase. You only need one drop. That part I would recommend for adults as well, okay? And you can also use, let's see, yes, definitely on a, on a tissue. So we've learned about these ways of inhalation or through the air. We've seen a diffuser. We've demonstrated a mister, um, an inhub, a sniff stick such as this, and rubbing your hands, which I recommend only for adults and also a piece of tissue, um, one drop on a piece of tissue up under your pillowcase for adults, okay? Lastly, another way to use essential oils is topically, right? So, topically, there are a couple of ways to use essential oils. For example, you can make an application, like a massage oil, if you will, um, in a one ounce flip top bottle. It's a okay, flip top bottle. You see this bottle is a dark amber color. You would add halfway with a, a carrier oil. I like jojoba oil, it's the color of it. You can use grapeseed oil or any other sort of carrier oil of your choice. And I just prefer jojoba because it has properties similar to a layer of our skin. Okay, so with jojoba oil, I'll add halfway this bottle, for example, one ounce bottle. And I will add my essential oil drops to this bottle as well. And so, for a one ounce bottle, we're adding no more than 16 drops for adults, no more than six drops for children, and no more than four drops for infants, okay? And I'll put a, a link in the description for this dilution chart. Again, that's no more than 16 drops for adults, no more than six drops for children, and no more than four drops for infants, okay? And you're again, you're adding halfway, you're adding the drops of essential oil, putting the top back on, shaking 50 times, open the top back up, add more jojoba or whatever carrier oil you choose up to the shoulder, not to fill all the way to the top, only to the shoulder, and you want to have room to shake. Put the top back on and shake 50 times. You know, it's, it's a good idea just to shake um, every time you're using a apparatus or something, so to make sure the oils are still mixed together, okay? So that's for this, and you simply, you know, use it on your skin, just as a rub, 
a massage area like your arms or your feet you know for adults you know roman chamomile is known to be an anti-inflammatory and anti-spasmodic for example um so you can actually use this on areas of your body for women i would not recommend that you put it anywhere near your breasts or under your arms or any open pores so you can use um I'm going to use it like a massage oil. And if you haven't heard about this, this is a side note. But for um, infants, for example, you can, there is a discipline known as infant mental health. And in infant mental health, these practitioners or clinicians, if you will, are taught about infant massage okay how to um, massage a baby how to what are the benefits of a, a massaging there's also information on the internet but i would definitely look into if you if you're planning to use this app you know use essential oils or massage oils or application for your infant or child for that matter older child look into online for infant massage or child massage just to see recommendations on how to apply them to children. It is a beautiful experience to, to see how it's recommended, you know, to introduce massaging to infants, okay? So that's another way of application for us to use as adults and children. So we learned about in a bath, and we learned about topically. There's one more application with topically I need to add is a roller bottle. You can use a roller bottle in order to apply essential oils. So a roller bottle such as this is another dark bottle. You would fill it halfway again for, for example it's a carry oil of choice halfway with um, jojoba oil add your drops to this 10 milliliter roller bottle so in a 10 milliliter roller bottle for adults it's five drops for children two drops and for infants one drop and again i'll put a link in the description for the dilution charts the things that i'm mentioning here just simply click on the link and it will allow you opportunity to select it as a download just simply enter the zero in there um, to get it for free. You can immediately download and I think it also sends it to your email as well. So again, I'll leave a link in the description for the dilution chart for so you remember the number of drops for what application you are planning to use it for if you choose. Okay? So in a 10 milliliter bottle, you would simply do the same. Let's see, take the top off. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Fill it halfway with the number of drops, as I mentioned. Five for adults, two for children, and one for infants. And if you're going to use, if you know you want to use this for yourself and children, any of the applications that I mentioned here, that the number of drops are different, use separate bottles and label them. You know, have a label on your bottle so that you know exactly what um, number of drops I would recommend putting what's on it in it rather um, jojoba roman chamomile for example and a number five drops that way you know and maybe you want to put adults or you maybe you want to put children for somebody else who comes along you know who might not be familiar of exactly what it is but definitely label your product or your um, your bottles something similar to this like a gold label it could be you know they have label makers where you can make different things but I would definitely label so label your bottles so for adults and children so going back to this you would fill halfway with a hoba add your drops put the top on shake again 
Open it back up, fill it up to the shoulder. Not over, because when you put this on, it'll spill over. <laughs> so only fill it up to the shoulder. Put the cap back on. Ah, and you're ready to roll. <laughs> so in order to use this application, what you can do is use it on the foot. And why you say, why the foot? Well, we know that from anatomy or science class or that all the nerve endings in our body are in our foot, from our body, are in our foot. So you can use essential oils for it to go through your body. And understanding that essential oils are known typically to go through your body in less than 20 minutes. You know, if it's if it's if it's absorbed properly, okay. And the way you would do that, I'm gonna demonstrate on my handy dandy bear. <laughs> so you would simply, like if this is a big toe, simply roll down. That's it. So on your big toe, adults, roll down. For children roll down for infants it may be a little different but definitely check into infant massage and they may also have more additional information of, of what they want uh, what they recommend for children as far as massaging is concerned okay <laughs> so we have learned about inhalation we have learned about in a bath and we have learned about topically how to apply essential oils and if there are any questions that you may have about this essential oil or its application certainly leave a comment i would love to know if you've used roman chamomile if you don't mind sharing and with what was your experience with it and is there are any additional essential oils perhaps that you would like to learn about if you could also put that in the comments that would be truly appreciated i hope this information was beneficial for you and again to reiterate with these applications safety is always key i recommend that you store any and all these applications with the oils or the salts in a cool dark place in a refrigerator if you can you know if you have children that might not be as advantageous if them thinking that there's something else when it's not but a, a cool dark place because essential oils exposed to light or can oxidize which breaks down the essential oil so that's why we want to be mindful and always safety 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 <laughs> you know that with me is always key so again i hope this information was beneficial for you if there's any additional information you would like to learn about this essential oil roman chamomile essential oil or any essential oil and the applications that you can use with the essential oils that were mentioned today to use with children then certainly leave a comment below I thank you for, for watching, and as always, it's my pleasure to serve you. God bless you. I love you. Until next time, bye-bye.